So in June of 2016, I had the opportunity to be the detachment OIC uh, for a missile shoot in uh, Miramar, uh, Marine Corps Air Station Miramar down in California. Uh, it was a great opportunity. It was one of my last trips in the F-18. Got to uh, stay down in San Diego and we brought uh, air to air missiles uh, to shoot, which is part of an allocation that the Navy gets uh, to test and shoot. So we went down to Miramar where there's airspace over the Pacific that's specifically designed for uh, missile shoots and tests and stuff like that where they, they send uh, notices to the mariners to let them know you know to stay out of the engagement zone and stuff like that so uh, this trip uh, this specific video was actually uh, where I had the opportunity to shoot an AIM-9 uh, which is a uh, heat-seeking air-to-air missile the way it works is we bring uh, LUU-2 flares out and a, a range safety officer drops the flare we spin back around and uh, we shoot the we shoot the flare with an AIM-9 missile. You know, the heat seeking, uh, the seeker head, the IR uh, seeker will track the, the flare and uh, hopefully engage it and blow up on the target. So uh, right here, uh, so we were in the uh, live loading area away from everybody because we had live missiles. Uh, right here, uh, being armed up by the ground crew, they're also waving. Uh, it's a little device that allows them to check the IR seeker and if I hear the tone rise I give them the thumbs up like I did there and everything is uh, good so arm the missile that's all I'm carrying and we go to the uh, hold short area you'll see when I uh, hold short here in a second the RSO actually parks next to me you see the little white uh, uh, tubes as it taxis by those are the uh, actual flares that, that drop their parachute drop flares so uh, we went out as a four ship of aircraft, uh, so lead aircraft, and then uh, uh, I was dash two, and then uh, two other aircraft. You'll see that Gonky is actually uh, right here in the uh, B model. He wasn't shooting a missile, but he was actually the uh, photo bird, the chase bird. So he's got some money in his back seat that's going to take pictures and video and all that stuff. So. Uh, really cool opportunity uh, to get to see the missile shoot so uh, we follow out the, the uh, uh, RSO uh, was the lead aircraft and me then Gaunti then another airplane uh, it was kind of a, a undercast I guess you know it was an overcast day but it was actually just a little bit of a thousand foot scud layer uh, marine layer uh, which is kind of standard in the summertime in uh, uh, Southern California but uh, we line up on the runway, three on the runway, dash four kind of sits uh, at the hold short. Uh, once dash three uh, gives the thumbs up, I will then turn and give the thumbs up to dash one, uh, who will then give me the kiss off signal, which is what the Navy does, and he'll light the afterburner and go. And then uh, 10 seconds later, I will give the uh, kiss off signal to um, Gonky. And I will go as well. And because of the weather, uh, we used uh, what's called Radar Trail, which I talked about in the lightning strike video. So uh, instead of doing a formation takeoff or anything like that, I just do a, uh, I take off and as soon as I'm airborne, lock him up with the radar, call tight on, and uh, that gets us through the clouds with a mile spacing so we don't have to worry about you know, running into each other or um, rejoining. Cool thing about Miramar, uh, well, not cool thing, but the thing about Miramar is as soon as you take off, you have to do an immediate jink right because uh, I think it's La Jolla. There's uh, houses off the end of the runway, very nice, very rich establishment, and they do not like you flying over. I actually had a guy uh, during the debt, we had to go in the commander's office, kind of a Top Gun-ish moment because he had inadvertently flew over, and they will report it, and they don't like it. So uh, you know, it's an immediate uh, jink to the right there. Get through the clouds as soon as uh, we pop out, call visual, and uh, rejoin on the aircraft. And then uh, we head out to the airspace as a uh, three ship. We got some pictures uh, in between, I think. Uh, but uh, the biggest thing was just getting rejoined and go. Uh, once we truck into the airspace, uh, we do a weapon systems check, make sure everything was good. And the way it would work is I would shoot last, so the first three aircraft sh shot first. And you'll see here in a second, 
I, um, I'm, I'm filming with my camera from behind. So you got the three aircraft, you got the guy dropping the flare in the lead aircraft, uh, and then you've got the photo bird, and then the guy who's actually going to be shooting. Uh, the safety observer drops the first, uh, they drop two uh, to make sure at least one of them you can guide on. And then they'll wagon wheel back around so they'll make a 360 degree turn about, you know, two miles ish with a run in. And, you know, it's just barely dropping and the shooter aircraft will roll in and shoot it. I don't think I got any good footage. I wish I had the audio, but at the time I didn't have uh, audio capabilities uh, to film. Uh, but you can see here that that's what it's going to look like, you know, when I come back and shoot. So after he was done uh, shooting his, he actually uh, went off to another part of the airspace. Funny thing, we actually had to stop the exercise because another airplane kind of trundled across right in our, uh, our path. So we had to make a couple laps before it was my turn because... Uh, this guy, you know, was one of our guys, you know, he just took the wrong direction and ended up in front of us, so we had to stop. So we'd completed the first shoot, he drops two more, and then the RSO, so that's Gonky off doing the photo burden off the other wing is the RSO. He goes clear to arm, clear to fire. I arm it up, verify that I've got a good tone, the missile's tracking, uh, and that it's, you know, it's right, it's on the correct uh, target, which is one of the flares, and then I call Fox 2. Missile comes off like a little bottle rocket. It initially swooped down, and I thought it was going, you know, like a lame duck. It was going straight for the water, and then zips back up, hits the flare, explodes, and you know it's cool. It's like a little bottle rocket. So as we observe it hitting the flare, it's bula bula is the call, and then uh, we go switch is safe. Uh, you'll see a couple. I've got a couple uh, other views of it, you know, from the the GoPro. I, I should have had one forward, but uh, all I have is the the uh, missile side facing so here's just another view so you got the RSO off the right you know, he's the one making sure it's safe and you know kind of running the show and then uh, the photo bird on the side uh, with the missile and uh, the same thing you know clear to arm clear to fire Fox 2 and the missile will come off difference between the Air Force and the Navy Navy uh, you pull the trigger on the uh, control stick there and the Air Force would have been uh, it's called a pickle button. It's a button on the top of the stick. Just totally different uh, way the aircraft are set up in the Navy versus the Air Force. Here's a slow-mo version. I slow it down so you can kind of see the rocket firing and and, and uh, coming off and you can see it in the visor too which is pretty cool. It's it's really fast. I mean if you don't slow it down you know, you'll never never really see it but once we're done I rejoined with the lead aircraft we do a battle damage check uh, here you can see the little white pods those are the remaining uh, Lutu flares and uh, we just make sure there's no damage um, from his aircraft from when he shot um, and then no damage to my aircraft you know nothing, nothing from the rocket boat or stuff just precautionary we do a battle damage check on every uh, on every sortie there so with that done, uh, we decided to, you know, mission accomplished, return to base, down to uh, SoCal. There's a thousand feet overcast in the fields. So that marine layer had not gone away. So we, we, Donkey went his separate direction with the other aircraft, and I rejoined on number one. And the plan was to do a section, which is a two ship uh, approach into the weather. And then once we were below the clouds, we were going to take spacing. And, uh, you know, I, I would take trail because it was only a thousand feet, so there's, there's plenty of room to do that. I would take trail and uh, we'd fly our separate approaches. So you can see here, I'm, I'm rejoining on uh, the lead aircraft to um, to get in close for that. Here we're coming in, so we're, we're just about to penetrate the, uh, the clouds there, so configure the approach, get the gear, get the flaps, and uh, make sure everybody is uh, fully configured, you know, gear down, uh, landing flaps, and ready for the, uh, for the approach. You can see kind of in the visor. Uh, if I had more cameras, I'd have a better angle, but um, you can see there. And then 
uh, we rejoin, uh, you know, we're, we're fingertip basically flying through the weather. It's a lot of work for both the wingman and the flight lead because you have to be smooth. You know, you, you know, as a wingman, you know, that, so there's a thumbs up basically telling him, you know, his configuration is good. I see his gears down and locked. And gives me a thumbs up saying, yep, looks like yours is good too. Uh, and then now we're going to go through the weather. But as I was saying, it's, it's a lot of work because, you know, you're, you're flying a few feet off another aircraft in a landing configuration. He's trying to fly a smooth platform, fly the approach. And you're just trying to hang on, you know, as the wingman, so. And then here, as we break out, uh, you know, we, we see the field, see the runway. Uh, lead confirms that I see it as well, and so I start to take spacing, uh, so I can land behind him, you know, on the runway. Uh, you know, we have reduced separation minimums because we're both fighter type aircraft, and we land staggered. You know, he'll take one side of the runway, I'll take the other. You know, versus need a mile or more, you know, we can kind of cut it down a little bit, uh, but. What happens on this approach, uh, we end up, they, they slow us down to slow us practical because somebody finds some debris on the runway. And what that drives is for us to have to slow down to, you know, slow as we can go. Well, the problem with that is they said that before I had gotten my, you know, uh, appropriate spacing behind them. So uh, I won't be able to take enough spacing because I can't get slow enough to do it. Uh, even, even with S turns or whatever. So what Tower tells us basically uh, as we come in is just uh, he allows lead to land and then I'll do a go around uh, just to you know go around a closed pattern. You know it's a thousand feet, so it's perfectly legal. It's like a circling approach. But I'll, I'll you know chase him down and, and, and do the go around, and you know it's it's no big deal. And uh, this is actually you know I use this on the lightning strike video. And if anybody's wondering, this is actually. Um, because you know, I obviously didn't have any video, it was just a representation. I do the go around for spacing, and uh, I'll pull close and come back and land.
Thanks for watching today's episode. Hope you enjoyed it. Like I said, if it is something you'd like to see in the future, please uh, leave a comment below. Uh, I've got some more videos uh, from flying the Hornet that I could go back uh, and explain. In fact, especially from the Finney flight video, if you guys take a check that out and want uh, kind of something similar, I'll, I'll do that next week. Yeah. Not sure when I'm going to be flying again for the uh, T-38, but I will be going back to the airline uh, uh, this week. So uh, can also explain some some airline stuff, although you're not allowed to bring uh, cameras in the cockpit, so I won't be able to uh, get any video of that, unfortunately. Uh, hope you guys have a great week, and I will see you next time.